Hello learner, welcome to Manifested e-learning platform. My name is FAM Nguiri and today ladies and gentlemen, we are discussing about the financial modeling and data analytics paper December 2023 sitting. The focus is on question 23 and you are presented with the following information right on the left of your screen here. You be given the stock name Z Tam Kenya Limited, Car Assemblers, Ujenzi Centum, M Cement, Kilimo Bora, Nairobi All Share Index, and you've been given the ticker symbol right over here. You've also been provided with the portfolio compositions, and all of these total 200%. And how you can be able to just quickly check is by scrolling down over here, and you can see that the sum is 100% right here. You are presented with the weekly returns for all of those companies, of all of those four companies, including the Nairobi All Share Index. Now, you are required to calculate the weekly returns for each of the individual stocks and the Nairobi All Share Index. Calculate the wage portfolio, the average portfolio return for the historical period. You are told to calculate the standard deviation for each of the individual stocks and the Nairobi All Share Index. Then you are told to calculate the standard deviation for the portfolio returns to assess its risk and to calculate the beta each individual stock of the portfolio which measures its sensitivity to the market movements. And you can see these are 20 marks. This is 20 marks question. So the way I've decided to arrange the information is to arrange it as you can see on the right of your skin, screen over here to calculate the weekly um, returns for each of the individual stocks of the Derby All Share Index. So we just pick um, average. Average, not average A, you can see the average right over here. And the average of what? We want to pick the average for Z term Kenya to pick the average values right here. Up to there, close the brackets, then you enter. So we're saying that the average return should be negative 0.2%. Let's put it to maybe say two decimal places. Like that. Two decimal places is up to there. And if we were to drag it moving towards the right, we wouldn't be wrong. Because we're saying that it picks the average from car assemblers. You can see car assemblers, it picks it right there. So that's what they're saying. The average, the weekly returns is given to us right there. Escape. We move ahead and answer part B of the question. You're told to calculate the average portfolio return over the historical period. We have been given the portfolio composition. And the portfolio composition can be linked with this top part right here. The portfolio composition is there. Enter. And we link it with all of them towards the right control R like that, so that you can be able to pick the portfolio composition. Remember, we have computed the average weekly returns above here. So we just link it with up above there there and then we drag it control r like that the same values excluding the all share index because this all of them the, all of these portfolio composition total to a hundred percent as you can see down here we cannot be able to include the all share index into our portfolio how do we get the average portfolio return pick plus we open the brackets that value times we average weekly return plus that value times that value, close the bracket, the portfolio composition multiplied by the average, average weekly return, close the bracket, and then we add finally the portfolio composition for Kilimo Bora and we multiply that with the average weekly returns. That, oops, that, close the brackets and enter. 
so I think I didn't put um, um, I didn't put open a bracket here that's why it's giving me those values there so we open a bracket over here and then once we close it like that and we decide to enter it will actually be okay so we only want it into the two decimal places so we just sort of reduce it like so to two decimal places like that 0 0.35 percent now once we've gotten our portfolio return as 0 0.35 percent we can move on to part c calculate the standard deviation for each of the individual stocks and the nairobi all share index that's four marks so average standard deviation would be you pick std stud dev not p because you're not picking for the entire population we want stud dev standard deviation for the sample so we double click that and we can be able to just pick um the value for these values here we highlight this value for z term so we highlight it down like that and it picks to calculate for us the standard deviation for z term and we move up over here like this we can be able to see we already have that given to us there and if we were to drag it moving towards the right like so up till all share index it will actually pick the standard deviation remember for example this one is picking the standard deviation of the sample for the index for the nairobi all share index right here part d we ask to calculate the standard deviation of the portfolio returns to assess the risk and we're saying for us to be able to do that we will need to consider the weights and the weights would mean that we've already had the standard deviation over here completed to us over here but now we need to factor in the weights and we're saying it's going to be we pick that standard deviation times its corresponding weight over here the corresponding weights were given to us over here we can use that or we can even use this portfolio composition right over here so we close the bracket and we open another one over here so that it can actually pick the values as the way we want them then we add the standard deviation over here i forgot to open the brackets so we open it right above over here you can see it on the formula bar here so we open the brackets there and then we multiply that with car assemblers corresponding um, portfolio composition weight we open the brackets we pick ujenzi bora standard deviation weekly standard deviation times the ujenzi cement over here then we close the brackets plus we pick this value here and we multiply that against that value there open the brackets and we close the brackets like that and we just click enter so we can be able to put it in form of weights and we can see it's about 6.02 percent standard deviation so standard deviation of the portfolio is given to us there so we pick the standard deviations of the individual securities and we multiply them by the corresponding weights then finally we are asked to calculate the beta for each individual stock in the portfolio which measures its sensitivity to market movements the beta is given by covariance of the market and stock so you can put it like so covariance of the market and the stock then we divide that against the variance of the market like that and that's what we are saying we are going to do covariance of the market and stock of a variance of the market so we pick covar covar s because we're looking at a sample covariance and we open it up right over here covariance of what covariance of 
the market this is the market over here so we highlight that part covariance of the market and on the second array here we put the stock itself over here bearing in mind like that covariance of the market and stock like that and you can see what you've done covariance of the market and stock so we can lock the one for the market the market so we are saying this one for g is one that you can be able to decide to to lock f4 and f4 why are we locking it because we want to ensure that the covariance of the market remains like that and then we do what we divide now divide by you can see the variance like this we divide against we divide against variance or you just put it like that variance of the market but now before we do the variance like that we can say okay like that because that's just the covariance like that because you can see from the formula by just the covariance then we continue and say divided by the variance not var p but var s sample variance of the market based by this variance of the market so we pick the variance of these values here and we lock it so press f4 like that and we close the brackets that there that's our beta 0 0.0932 and if you are to drag it moving towards the right let's just confirm covariance remember we have locked that's the purpose of locking this one covariance of the market look this one has moved from initially z, z, z term z term to now car assemblies you can check the previous one over here escape check the previous one you see it is now currently at z term over z term here now we move on to the second one it actually picks but it remains this one remains the variance of the market remains the covariance of the market remains so we can be able to see that the model is foolproof control r but let's see if we are actually doing this the, the correct thing we want to try and prove if we are to pull it towards the right if you're going to get a bit of one you can see we already have beta of 1 beta of the market is always 1 because it's covariance of the market it's covariance of the market against the market divided by variance of the market we always have that value being 1 there and so with that ladies and gentlemen we have come to the end of question 23 thank you for being with manifested publishers we always here for you be blessed